It was the joy of the heavenly host to fulfill the purpose of their Creator. But a change came over this happy state. There was one who perverted the freedom that God had granted to his creatures. Sin originated with him who next to Christ had been most honored of God. Lucifer, son of the morning, was first of the covering cherubs, holy and undefiled. Little by little, Lucifer came to indulge the desire for self-exaltation. Though honored above the heavenly host, he ventured to covet homage due alone to the Creator. The high honors conferred upon Lucifer were not appreciated as God's special gift and therefore called forth no gratitude to his Creator. Leaving his place in the immediate presence of the Father, Lucifer went forth to diffuse a spirit of discontent among the angels. He began to insinuate doubts concerning the laws that governed heavenly beings. While there was no open outbreak, division of feeling imperceptibly grew up among the angels. He persistently defended his own course and fully committed himself to the great controversy against his Maker. Great numbers of the angels signified their purpose to accept him as their leader. God permitted Satan to carry forward his work until the spirit of disaffection ripened into active revolt. God's government included not only the inhabitants of heaven but of all the worlds that he had created. And Lucifer had concluded that if he could carry the angels of heaven with him in rebellion, he could carry also all the worlds. The inhabitants of heaven and of the worlds, being unprepared to comprehend the nature or consequences of sin, could not then have seen the justice of God in the destruction of Satan. Had he been immediately blotted out of existence, some would have served God from fear rather than from love. Satan's rebellion was to be a testimony to the universe through all coming ages.